second was to be an agent for change and make a major difference in the world. So I went to the head of the California CIF, which has 1,400 high schools, and said, what if we do this? In the sociology of a high school, it's the athletes that sit atop most of the food chains, right? They're the most admired, they're the ones that are looked up to. Suppose instead of being the purveyors of bullying, we have the athletes and coaches set the standard for tolerance. Suppose we have them each adopt and put their arm around someone who's being bullied. We can change the culture of that school mighty quick. Educational platforms, the millions of fans that come, can see a waterless urinal, can see a solar panel, and think about how to integrate those concepts into their own homes and businesses. What we do with individual athletes, which is to raise their profile, give them a specific identity in a world filled with perceptions that athletes are greedy or uninvolved, we want to make sure they're role models. At the professional level, we asked athletes to set up a charitable foundation and to put the leading business figures, political figures, and community leaders onto a charitable board, which would then execute a program designed to solve a problem that to the athlete was near and dear. So Warwick Dunn, who's a running back, was with Tampa and then Atlanta, just put the 150th single mother into the first home she'll ever own by making the down payment and uh, having the home outfitted. So it's athletes changing lives. Plant the seeds today that may not come to fruition until some years later. In other words, you meet a younger athlete. Well, he's not gonna sign this year or next year. You meet a coach. They're not, there may be no utility. But if you keep planting seeds, um, you'll be the beneficiary today of things you did a long time ago. If you can put yourself in the heart and mind of another human being and see the world the way they see it, uh, you can navigate your way through life uh, really, really well.